Hey, how's it going? I'm Jask, a concept artist and illustrator, and welcome to This to That, a series of videos where I talk about how I go about designing characters, props, and other visual development topics. In this video, I will be sharing the design process for a Dungeons & Dragons character I designed for my own personal use, and while I talk about the steps I went through to get from one idea to another, you can watch me do some line art and color for the final version of the character design on the screen in the meantime. I'll be putting up the first sketches and drafts I did as I go through as well, so without any further delay, let's get into it. First things first, if other artists or aspiring artists are watching this, take this process with a grain of salt. This is a very casual design and one I was doing for myself for my own purposes, and as such there were not as many drafts or developmental stages as there would have been if I was drawing this for somebody else or for a commercial purpose. Normally there would be a lot more stages and revisions to go through, but again since I did not have to check in with anybody else and I was the only person who needed consulting, this was much more streamlined than usual. Concept art is not always this simple, nor as self-indulgent, so don't take what you see here as standard. Getting into my actual process, though. The first things I do when thinking about a character is how I want them to feel when you look at them, and then name them based on that. A lot of others I have worked with and spoken to tend to name their characters as one of the last steps, but I usually do the opposite. If I can, I like having a name and a feeling for a character going into the design, and I try to build an appearance around those things. In this instance, a name was the very first thing I settled on, and then I went into some drafts. As I mentioned earlier, this is a character for Dungeons and & Dragons, and for once I decided to adhere to the naming convention for Tieflings, which for those unfamiliar, Tiefling is the character's race. Without getting into the specifics of how Tieflings are named, this character's name is Debauchery, and as that name suggests, they were supposed to be very... well, they were supposed to be a very debaucherous and sexy person. I wanted them to be eye-catching, sensual, someone who wasn't self-conscious about using their wiles, whether it be for work or for play, something like that was my general idea. With that in mind, this was Debauchery's first draft. I didn't really think about it too much, I just sort of drew something. Teal skin tone, simple horns, short hair, nothing too extravagant physically. Usually my tiefling designs are as over the top and unique and head turning as possible with their physical bodies, so for debauchery I did not want that at all. I wanted a pretty standard looking tiefling who turned heads because of how they presented and what they wore and how they carried themselves rather than how their body looked. And while that mostly held true to the end, almost everything from this first draft ended up changing compared to the final result. Truly, I was very satisfied with the vibe that I got from this first draft, but no matter what I did, I could not get this concept to work when I tried to draw the full standing character. It sounds silly to say it this way, but when I tried to draw debauchery with clothes on, everything fell apart. Nothing was working. I don't even know why, and that's the most frustrating part. Eventually, I stopped trying to force that design, and in trying to figure out what was wrong, I started messing around with a few different profile views and sketches. Turns out my biggest hang-up was the hair. So I tried out some new hairstyles, changed the shape of the face to accentuate it a little better, and that's when it started coming together. I also tried out a number of different horns, and I even got rid of them entirely at one point. For a little bit, I entertained the idea of debauchery taking after their non-tiefling parentage, because only one of their parents is a tiefling, and I had them look more human than tiefling. I was trying to work the angle of, like, they were the weird kid on the block with a tail who wrapped it around their waist Dragon Ball Z style to try to hide it and fit in. Uh, in the end, though, I didn't go through with it. 
While it could be a neat thing to explore in a D&D narrative, Debauchery's focus as a character was not on identity or culture or the struggle of acceptance or anything so introspective like that. They know who they are, they know what they are, they know where they came from, and they have no problems with that. So I did not feel like it was appropriate for them to have that kind of emotional struggle given that confidence they have in themselves. So I found some new horns and they looked like a tiefling again. As for Debauchery's outfit, I knew I wanted something with flowing fabric. Something long that would either trail behind them when they walked, or that would sort of follow their actions when they spun around or pivoted or were showing off. I had this image of like, they pass someone on the street and as they go by, the trail of their sash or scarf is left behind them and it draws people to look at who has left the trail. Another image that fits a little better with uh, what I was going for is almost like a dancer. Uh, you know, when dancers are in clothes that almost exaggerate their movements, where they've been versus where they're going and the way they move. And truthfully, I like to draw long clothes and flowing fabrics anyway. Scarves, capes, cloaks, uh, coats with tails, sashes. I think they're fun to draw and I really enjoy it. I'm also a fan of several layers of clothes, one on top of the other. I like sheer fabrics. So I took everything that I wanted and everything I liked and I mashed them into an outfit. Same goes for the jewelry. I have fun coloring metal, so I gave them some metal accessories. Now for the color. Debauchery ended up having a completely different palette by the time I was done with them. As you saw earlier, they started off with teal skin, black hair, and I planned on using pinks and purples mostly for the color of their clothes. However, when I was doing some early color tests with the first sketches, I felt like there was too much going on or that the colors weren't as harmonious in practice as I thought they were going to be. I changed their skin from the teal color to a darker, almost ashier brown, and that was a huge step in the right direction. Plus, it kind of played off of that earlier idea about debauchery taking after their human parent more than their tiefling parent, and having more of a human-like skin tone was a nice middle ground, I think, for that idea. Plus, I just plain liked this color more. I did try forcing the pink and purple anyway, and I tried to throw in some blue and yellow to balance it out when those colors alone weren't working, but it was not working and it did not last. The final palette ended up being a soft yellow and a couple different blues, and then with some black and white garments here and there. I did keep the soft purple for the eyes though, because I think it looks nice.
If you have been watching the speed paint portion of this video, you will see I've gotten to the part where I change a few things about the line art, and I would like to talk about why. At this point, while I was mostly satisfied with where I was going, the whole design still felt a little lacking. Debauchery had not fully met the energy I was trying to convey, and while their outfit was close to doing what I wanted, it was not quite there yet. Now when I was doing this and I started the line art, I did think it was good and I did think it was matching my expectations. But I ended up taking a break and working on some other projects, and when I came back to this after all that time, it wasn't really checking all the boxes anymore, so to speak. So I went in, added another layer, another long flowing piece of clothing to the ensemble, and later on when I'm nearly finished, you'll see that I go back and I try to change that shirt hanging around their arms and waist. I tried to turn it into a sheer piece of fabric instead of one that was solid, but that wasn't working, and in the end, it really just stuck out like a sore thumb, so I got rid of the entire thing. It was the only garment that had a lot of folds to it. Everything else in the design is really straight and fine pressed. So even though I really wanted the idea of a loose shirt around their waist that debauchery could easily like shrug off or shrug back on, it just wasn't working. So I got rid of it, plain and simple. Another thing I did, though, was uh, change how debauchery was standing. For how open in personality this character is, I felt like having their legs shoulder width apart and having their arms open was too much openness. So I tried bringing the feet together and that was perfect. The character instantly felt more proud, more polite, and more modest all at the same time, and I also feel like it made them look a little stronger or more resolved. Like they've chosen to stand here and they'll have confidence in that decision. It's kind of difficult to articulate, but I do think it was just a good decision overall to change the position of the legs, but not to change the position of the arms. You'll see towards the end that when I go to change that garment I mentioned, I also try to mess with the arms a little bit. The arms had been bugging me throughout the entire drawing, but I could never pin down why until the very end. I thought it was a pose problem or a perspective issue, but turns out the anatomy was just wrong. The arms were a little bit too short. So once I realized that, it was pretty easy to fix. It just took a lot of tries, as you will see. After that, it was just a matter of redoing a bit of color, doing some touch-ups here and there, and debauchery was finally finished. And that is just about everything I have to say about debauchery's development. So while the rest of the speed paint plays out, I'm going to take a step back and stop talking. Thanks for sticking around so far and I hope you enjoy the rest.
and after all that, I will wrap up this video. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time and attention, and I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this installment of This to That. If you have any questions, or if there's something you want to see me draw, or a topic you would like me to go into a little bit more in a future video, please leave a comment below or reach out to me on Twitter. To see more of my art and future videos, please consider subscribing to my channel or following me on Twitter. You can also support me on Patreon and you'll get access to all of that content and other content way sooner than everybody else. But that is all I have to say for this video. As always, this has been Jask Draws, I am Jask, and I hope to see you next time. Have a good one.